Hey loves, welcome back to Tulum Insider Society. If you don't know me yet, my name is Mari, I'm a Canadian and I am purchasing my first property here in Tulum and I will be walking you through my entire journey in a real estate series. Today is episode number three, where I'm gonna be covering property management. Now for those of you who don't know this, once you purchase a property, oftentimes you have the option to either manage it yourself, hire a property manager, or if you have access to it, have a property that is also managed as a condo hotel option. So today I'm actually gonna be sitting down with an expert, she's a property manager, and she'll be able to answer all of my questions and I will be bringing you guys along. If ever I forget anything in today's video and you have more questions, feel free to click the link in the description box below to directly ask me your questions. Now without further ado, let's hop in the car and go and meet Olivia to pick her brains on property management and investments in Tulum. To be honest with you guys, I'm not quite sure what's the ideal decision for me personally as an investor. I'm sure some people would love the idea of a DIY because they're a bit more in control and they get to give the best service possible. One thing that I'm concerned about is definitely the high season and low season in Tulum. I'm wondering if I were to go down that route, am I gonna be able to have my property rented out throughout the year? So I'm thinking perhaps DIY isn't necessarily the best option for me. I'm wondering if property management would be a better alternative. From my understanding, I have like a general idea of what that would look like. You know, I kind of like delegate everything. I'm not quite sure what it would cost me to do it. Am I supposed to put a certain amount up front? Am I supposed to give a percentage? I have no idea what it means. Comment below to let me know if you know what that is. But I'm looking forward to speaking with Olivia so that I can actually understand what is the best option available for me. So I'm on my way to meet Olivia, a property management expert who's been running her own company here in Tulum. Since I'm still figuring out if I should manage the property myself or hire a professional, I'm really hoping she can shed some light on which option makes the most sense for me. Managing everything yourself sounds like a real adventure. Meeting guests, making sure everything's perfect for their stay. But I'm starting to realize how much time and effort it actually takes to keep things running smoothly. Is that something I'm really prepared for? On the flip side, hiring a property manager sounds like a dream. No more worrying about late night check-ins, cleaning schedules, or sudden repairs. But giving up a percentage of the profits? That's something I really need to think about. And then there's the condo hotel option. It's basically the ultimate hands-off approach with everything taken care of, kind of like owning a hotel room that makes money for you. But I'm still wondering, does less control means less profit in the long run? And that is why today we are joined by the amazing Olivia, founder of Origin Property Management. Thank you so much for meeting us today, Thank Olivia. You. And I know you're supposed to be traveling, so you are literally <laughs> carving out some time from your schedule to help us today. I'm happy to be here with you today. I have so many questions and I wanna pick your brains about the different ways that are available for people like me, Canadians, Americans, to manage their property. Mm -hmm. And I've heard there's three main ways. So my understanding is that you can either do it yourself, mm -hmm. you can either hire a property management company like yours, or you can also have the option the to purchase a property, condo hotel style, and then they kind of manage it for you. But I really want to understand a bit better mm -hmm. what each option looks like? What are the pros, the cons? A lot of new buyers, especially international buyers, are asking these sorts of questions. Um, so it's good to review your options when you're uh, interested or looking at purchasing a new property. Um, so the option of doing it yourself is always uh, something that people perhaps think about. Um, one thing to consider is the amount of work that will be required. It is a time consuming job. Um, you know, you have people kind of checking in at all hours of the day. You do the cleaning, the maintenance yourself, um, messaging with the guests, um, the upkeep of the property, um, inventory. So all those things are something that you would handle yourself. So for a lot of people, especially not physically being here, that might not be the most ideal solution. That's when people start to look at a property management professional or a company. Um, so a property management company will handle the entire operation for you, including accounting as well, and take a percentage. That percentage can be 
average in, in this market in Tulum is between 20 to 30 percent. Um, you want to look for a property management company that has a good track record, that's very professional, has good communication, and has a good history of, of managing their rentals and success in that. The other option that you mentioned is the condo hotel option, and that is a newer model that a lot of new developers or projects are offering to their buyers. Um, this is a great model that allows you to have a bit more consistent revenue with your project. You basically purchase uh, one of the options or one of the condos available in the project and it's run like a hotel. So it's the marketing is done by the management team in a more uh, cohesive way that caters to a, a hotel style. Same with the amenities. Um, and basically you receive a percentage of the total income that's generated for that project. Thank you so much for clarifying, clarifying the different options and you know, what are the pros and the cons? What would you say as a property management is one of the things that people struggle with the most that you notice is recurring? I would say people who try to manage themselves definitely run into an issue with time and time management because it's sort of a 24 hour schedule. You never really, there's not a time where you close down um, like other businesses. You you do have to be available uh, 24 seven uh, for issues that do come up. Um, and it is labor intensive to be managing multiple different moving parts. So um, the different teams are people, personnel that you have um, manage or maintaining the property. I would say that that is um, the biggest headache that people run into um, that leads them to look for a property manager. I, I can imagine, yeah, <laughs> for sure, especially if there's like an issue that's just constantly having to deal with like problems, mm -hmm. you know, which people will run into. Yeah. In terms of um, people, you know, questioning the difference between hiring a property management or going for an investment where it's already handled for them, such as the, you know, the condo hotel option. Mm -hmm. How does the payment look like for one or the other? So I would say with the, if you have, if you're buying into a project that offers an in-house property manager in the uh, structure of a condo hotel, um, there's less of a an onboarding process. You don't have to look for the property manager yourself. Um, this company already comes vetted. They're very familiar with the project. Um, they already kind of have their strategy in order f in order to market the project. So there's a bit less work for you as a new owner independently to find a property management company. Um, so that's nice. And you kind of have the um, community of of being with the same company as all of your neighbors or uh, or other owners in the building the in theory the payments or the revenue that you will generate is more consistent um, because you're part of a a pool basically a, a revenue pool um, there's less highs and lows or extremes in the revenue that you should generate it should be more consistent since it's a percentage of the overall revenue that the project is generating so Olivia, something that's been in the back of my mind and also like a fear that I have as an investor because I've worked really hard to be able to like stack up the money I need to purchase my first property in Tulum is that I poorly invested and that I don't get a proper ROI. Now in the last video, I actually discussed a little bit more due diligence. So if you guys haven't already watched it, go check it out after the end of this video. Uh, but in terms of ROI, with you being really good with the market, understanding the ROIs in general, what would you say is something I can technically expect from a project like Bloom or any other projects that you are familiar with here in Tulum? Depending on the project, so depending on the size, the occupancy, larger villas or houses uh, will have an, a higher ROI. Um, anything I I would say above 20% is uh, you might want to be weary of if someone is, is offering or promising that. Um, a good property manager or developer uh, will offer you a relatively conservative ROI, so not to inflate the numbers or the expectation. Um, but I would say a healthy ROI, depending on, on the multiple factors, but the size being one, um, will be between uh, nine to 13.
plan to 90 or 13%. Which you say, because like the project I'm currently thinking of investing in is 7%. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also like quite a large facility. It's like a pretty big building. Right. What would you say to this? Is it like low? Is it normal? Is it... I would say um, that's a good thing to look out for is that the the developer, the project manager, the property management company is offering a conservative ROI. That means that this is an honest number. They're not looking to inflate your expectations or just get your business simply by you know uh, telling something that's not true. Um, I would say that's a healthy number for the project, a, a larger project when they do have um, a larger number of units to fill in the condo hotel model. Um, that is one thing that you need to consider is the size of the project and the number of units that they are managing mm -hmm. um, since that will contribute to the overall um, revenue uh, and profitability of the project. Mm -hmm. And as a property management company, what would you say is like the best way to handle when there's these fluctuations well, how do you guys handle it as a, a company so a good property management company will know the market very well um, they'll do uh, in-depth and uh, recurring analysis of the market in order to have strategies to navigate um, the season. So in Tulum, there is, you know, a high season and a low season. A uh, good property management company will know the seasons very well, the seasonality, and be able to navigate it with different marketing tools using local uh, agencies or local concierges, um, a community in order to to do certain um, pushes or marketing campaigns to try to increase uh, occupancy in low season as much as possible. Mm. I'm personally considering either hiring a property manager, manager like you or going down the investment route where I'm like actually purchasing, buying in directly as a condo hotel option. Mm -hmm. I'm contemplating perhaps giving like Bloom my money. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of going at the moment. And I'm wondering if um going the condo hotel option would be something that would uh just be for me more of a hassle-free mm -hmm. option it's definitely um i think a more it's an easier entry um the company will guide you through the process uh since they're uh, physically there and they have their team set up and they have their operations set up at that project already you do have the benefit of uh, not having to go out and look and introduce a company to your project they are going to be the ep experts of that project um, and they're going to be working very closely with the developers it is definitely the least hassle in terms of um, getting someone um, aligned with the project and um, set up with what your your goals are and, and the expectations of the project. I think if the project does offer a condo hotel option, it's definitely a strong option to consider. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ready I'm, to I'm juggling the two. <laughs> I really do like the option of the condo hotel. I also see the value of hiring a property management. For sure, for sure, for me, it would not be aligned like a DIY because mm -hmm. I do not have time. Mm -hmm. and. I would be the type of person that would just get overwhelmed when I would have too many inquiries and it would make me lose like my yeah my and affinity a lot of people the have uh, full-time jobs right mm -hmm. so if you're someone who is just purchasing this property as an investment property um, the property manager is going it's it's their full-time job right so this person or this company is going to have the time dedicated to ensure that it, everything is run smoothly. Mm -hmm. I feel like all my uh, my questions are answered. I'm so grateful, Olivia, that you came and gave us a little bit of time. Hopefully, provided you guys with a lot of answers. If you have any questions, make sure you click in the link in the description box below for one-on-one -on -one support. And we are directly in contact with her, so we'll be able to provide you with her contact information if you do need a property manager as well. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna go and bring you along. Uh, on our next journey. I love you guys so much. I shall see you very soon. Bye. After speaking with Olivia, I've gained so much 
and decide on what would be the different options available for me, whether I want to handle things myself, hand it over to the pros, or go fully hands off with a condo hotel. And ultimately what it boils down to from my understanding is really what kind of experience you want to have as a property owner. Now that I have a better idea of how to manage the property, the next big question is, how do I actually pay for it? In the next episode, I'll be talking to a finance expert to learn all about expat-friendly financing options here in Mexico. Stay tuned.